What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 video. So in this one I'm going to be covering a new homebrew app by Al Azov called Payload Guest, which allows you to load payloads from your hard drive or your USB drive via a homebrew app instead of having to go through the usual WebKit exploit to load the payloads. Now you'll still need to load Gold Hen version 2.0 in order for this app to work currently. And because of that, that means you are still going to have to go through the WebKit exploit to run that. But any additional payloads you want to run after that, you'll be able to use this homebrew app to load them. Now, in my previous video where I covered Gold Hen 2.0 and showed off some of the features, I showed you guys the bin loader feature that is built into Gold Hen 2.0. And that is what this homebrew app takes advantage of to load payloads from your hard drive. Now, obviously, you can load payloads in different ways. You can send them via uh, your computer or your phone with the TCP method. There's the HTTP post method with this bin loader option in Gold Hen where you can go to a website to load the payloads without having to go through the WebKit exploit and getting all of the out of memory errors. So there are other ways to do this, but I think doing this with a homebrew app is probably one of the best ways because you can control all the payloads that you have. You know, you can put all the payloads you want on your hard drive and they'll always be there on your hard drive ready to access at any point. You don't have to worry about, you know, WebKit hosts switching out the payloads um, or not having the right payloads that you want to run because you're in control of what payloads that you have and what payloads you want to run. That's why I think this is probably the better method is to use this homebrew app. So without any further ado, let's get into how to get this set up and working. So the first thing we'll have to do is switch on over to the computer and download Alizov's payload guest zip file, which I'll have linked in the video description. If we open this up in your normal archive software, zip file software, then we're going to extract the package file. Now it also comes with the payloads as well, which is going to be really useful. So all we need to do is grab a USB drive and make sure the USB drive is formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format. Then all we have to do is copy the package file to the root of the drive. Don't put it inside any folders and you are good to go. So once you've done that, we're then going to extract the payloads as well. So we'll open up the payloads.zip file and you've got this payloads folder and it has all the main payloads or accessory payloads that you're going to want to potentially run after you've ran your jailbreak. So all we need to do is again copy that into the root of the USB drive as well. Just drag and drop it. I'll show you how to install it to the hard drive as well as the USB because this homebrew app allows you to load the payloads from either a USB drive or the internal hard drive of the PS4. And that's where I would recommend you have your payloads is on the internal drive, but you can run them off a USB as well. So once that's done, we can go ahead and eject the drive and plug it into our PS4. Okay, and once we're on the PS4, of course, we're going to go into our internet browser and you're going to want to load up your exploit host, whichever one you're using, to load Gold Hen version 2.0. So again, I'm using caro218.ir. You can use Alazev's host. You can use Night King's host and any other host that, uh, you know, is decent and is being well maintained and updated so that it has the Gold Hen version 2.0 payload. So once you get all your out of memory errors and you get past that, you get through the whole uh webkit exploit which is what's loading right here and then once it gets done you can then load the kernel exploit by clicking this button to load the latest jailbreak and once that eventually works without crashing you'll be able to run gold hen version 2.0 so gold hen v2b in this case is what it's called so just go ahead and run it right there now once that's running you'll then be able to go into the settings Scroll down to Debug Settings, Game, Package Installer, and install Alizov's Payload Guest Homebrew. So we're going to go ahead and install that app. And once it's done, it is right there. So the first thing that will happen if we run this right now is it should detect the payloads that are on the USB. But we won't be able to load them because what we need to do first is we need to go into the settings, go to Gold Hen Settings, and then go to enable the bin loader server. So make sure bin loader server is enabled right here. It will not be enabled by default. So make sure you tick that box to enable it. So it says the bin loader is listening on port 9090. And then you should be able to load any payload that you want from within here. So for example, all I have to do to load something, you know, let's just do disable updates because it's not going to 
really mess with anything. So if we run disable updates, you can see payload received from the local host. And boom, there we go, disabled updates. The payload ran no problem. No need to go back into the browser, refreshing anything, clearing cookies, website data. None of that stuff is required. You can just enable the bin loader server, hop into this homebrew app and then run whatever payload you want one after the other. I can load it a second time, load an additional payload one after the other and it should work no problem. So um, if something's not showing up, if you've added something while you have the homebrew app open, you can just hit square to refresh all of the payloads and you should be good to go. So that's the, the basics of how it works. Now, obviously, like I said, I recommend having the payload stored on the hard drive instead of on uh, the USB drive. So a couple of ways that you can install it to the hard drive. If you have the PS4 Explorer app by Lappy, this is a very useful homebrew app that I highly recommend everybody has installed on their jailbroken PS4s. I covered it in my episode three of my PS4 jailbreak tutorial series, which I'll have linked in the cards in the top right hand corner and down in the video description. But essentially, all you do is you hit uh, right or left on the D-pad to switch between your USB drives. And then you just press triangle on the payloads folder. You go to copy to copy it. And then if we just go back to the root of our hard drive, go into the data folder and then just press triangle and paste the folder. And that will copy all the payloads here into the data folder. And this is where uh, the homebrew app looks for your payloads on the hard drive is inside this data folder. So you just copy the payloads folder in there and you should be good. So all we have to do now is if we close this and we go back into payload guest, this time you can see we've got data forward slash payloads. So these are all the payloads in the data folder. And then as we get down further, you'll see it then switches to all the payloads on the USB drive as well. So obviously I can unplug my USB drive now so my USB drive is no longer plugged in. I'll press square to refresh. And as you can see, it's only showing the ones on the hard drive now and I can load them no problem. So yeah, it's quite simple. Um, there's obviously other ways you can install it. You can use FTP as well. Also, if you want to add an image next to each of the payloads. So if you want to customize this a little bit and instead of these little question mark boxes next to the payloads, you can replace that with a PNG file and image so, you know, you can have custom images for each one of the payloads if you want. So I'll just show you guys how to do that as well as how to get the uh, payloads installed via FTP as well. So if we go ahead and close this and if we go to settings and we go to gold hen and we enable the FTP server. So tick the box to enable the FTP server. You'll get the message saying FTP listening on your PS4's IP address on port 2121. And then if we switch back on over to the computer again and we open up FileZilla and all we have to do is type in that IP address into the host box, put in 2121 as the port number, click quick connect and that will connect you to your PS4's hard drive. And then you can just go into the data folder here and of course grab your payloads folder and then you can just copy the payloads folder into the data folder on your hard drive and that is another way of getting the files copied over. So you can either copy them from the USB to the hard drive with PS4 Explorer or just connect via FTP directly to the hard drive and copy them over your network into the data folder. So yeah, as for the actual image files, if you want to get some customization with the images showing up next to the payloads, all you have to do is add a PNG file with the same name as the payload that you want to run. So in this case, I've got two images here. We've got a FileZilla icon for the FTP payload and we've got the you know web browser icon for the uh, enable browser payload. So we'll just copy these files in uh, right here and then I'll rename this one to the same name as our uh, enable browser. So we'll just rename this to enable browser.png and for some reason this file did not copy so I'll copy this one back in. And then we'll rename this one to the FTP payload, which is just FTP.png. So just create your image file with the same name as the payload and you should be good. I'm not entirely sure if it resizes the images automatically. So just try and make sure that whatever image file you're using 
is an image file that's actually you know the same width and height so in this case 512 pixels by 512 pixels doesn't have to be that uh, resolution it could be 440 by 440 maybe smaller obviously have a have an image file that's a reasonable size for an icon um, and you should be good so yeah there you go that should work so if we switch back over to our ps4 once more go back on the payload guest homebrew and if i hit square to refresh and we scroll down you can see we have our icons showing up there for enable browser and ftp you can see the transparency is a bit broken with the png files that's stuff that will be fixed in future versions and i believe in a future version it sounds from what i read from the readme file uh, from alazev it sounds as if the plan is to make this app independent of the bin loader server so right now in order for this to work, like I said, it requires you to have Gold Hen version 2.0 with the bin loader server running. But it sounds like future versions, uh, it might change to the point where that will not be required and it will be able to run independently of this bin loader server from Gold Hen, in which case you might be able to use it, you know, without having to enable that uh, in future. Obviously, the current version right now does rely on that bin loader server. So make sure you have it enabled before trying to load a payload. But yeah, that's basically it. That is a very useful piece of homebrew for loading payloads. And it, again, it's another thing that will make it easier to use the 7.55 jailbreak. It'll be less frustrating for people because you only have to go through that horrible WebKit exploit experience once. Well, obviously, you have to go through it multiple times because you're going to crash a few times before you actually get to load the jailbreak. But once you eventually load the first payload, Gold Hen version 2.0, you shouldn't have to go back into the WebKit exploit to load anything else. You can just use this Homebrew app from now on and load your payloads from there. And any new payloads that you find uh, that you want, you can just copy them to the payloads folder in the data folder or the payloads folder on a USB, and then you'll be able to load them with this app. So yeah, great work by Al Azev. It's a pretty awesome application. I'm glad that this is finally something that exists. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. So. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.